This is a production of Cornell University. Um, so as Carl just mentioned, the, really the steps to applying uh, aerial phenotyping are to first create a flight plan. Uh, we use lychee in order to do that. Then on the day of the, of the flight, you should capture a, an image standard. Uh, we use an image standard that comes with the camera, uh, this MicroSense camera. Um, then on the day of the flight, um, you fly, obviously, and you, you uh, capture the images. Um, then, you can, uh, then you need to stitch those images into a, a complete uh, ortho mosaic. So that's the complete uh, uh, image of the field. And then finally, um, you need to be able to assign plot polygons and be able to, to actually use these images either for um, extracting uh, mean mean pixel values which go into say ndbi um, or using these images for in in machine learning so the hardware we're using is is the same as as what carl just presented uh, we use a, or a different drone but it's similar um, we have this uh, dji hexacopter and then this micasense uh, five band camera and it, uh, the, the five bands uh, correspond to um, blue, green, red, a far red, and then a near infrared. And those bands um, uh, coincide with uh, uh, where chlorophyll is, is uh, reflective and absorb, absorptive. And since uh, chlorophyll is the primary means of production for the plant, um, we're hoping, we, were, we were hoping that this would be a uh, a good uh, good bands to measure. Um, I'm presenting today um, just a single aerial uh, a single field experiment that's part of the genomes to fields uh, uh, consortium. Um, so genomes to fields is a, a multi location multi year uh, hybrid and inbred um, evaluation. Um, and so here I'm just showing from 2017 NYH2, um, but I, I do have from 2015 and 2016 as well, and working on 2018, 2019. So in 2017, for this experiment, we had seven flights. Um, Nick Casmore collected these. Um, so you see the different dates that we flew on throughout the growing season. Um, 500 plots total, 232 hybrids. <coughs> then um, using uh, this image breed that I've been working on, uh, which is part of the breed base um, uh, database out of uh, Lucas Mueller's lab, um, uh, I could segment uh, the plot, individual plots, and then uh, have them saved in the database um, against their you know, the field design and, and what was the hybrid that was planted there and, and so on. And um, so looking at or uh, calculating NDVI and NDRE, these are two vegetative indices. Um, NDVI uses near infrared and red, while NDRE uses uh, near infrared and the far red uh, band. Um, we see that uh, they're all highly correlated across days after planting. Um, and if you look at the bottom row um, uh, at uh, 91 and 106 days after planting, there's a 0.4 uh, to 0.5 uh, phenotypic correlation to yield. Um, so to try to improve these correlations, we can try thresholding out the the soil or any kind of background. Um, so here, uh, the, the threshold I applied was just to drop the 20, drop the lowest 25% of pixels. Um, and so um, uh, you can see, uh, I mean, uh, visually it, it looks to be doing what was intended. 
um, and then calculating uh, these uh, in the same indices on the thresholded images uh, improves the correlation here like uh, in NDRE we see 0.6 at 91 days after planting um, just show, kind of showing how yield distributes over over this um, so it tends to cluster at the higher ends of, of these vegetative indices. Um, so of course, since this is only phenotypic, um, and we want to we need to calculate heritabilities and and uh, improve our models here. Um, but what I'm excited about um, is to try using CNNs uh, to directly learn the features from the images. Um, so as uh, Travis kind of showed the other day, um, uh, there's a CNN has a has an architecture, and this architecture defines the different filters and the different layers in it. Um, the good thing about CNNs is you can just use some off the shelf, uh, and so here um, the input that I'm feeding into it is a kind of a montage of of four different images. So in the top left is the arc, uh, red, green, blue. Then the top right, I have the near infrared and red. And bottom left, uh, near infrared and the far red. And then um, bottom left is just a near infrared threshold. Um, and so normalizing and centering these images before, uh, before putting them in uh, is a good idea. And um, so just showing some preliminary uh, results that came out of this, um, training, training this CNN on uh, images from 92 and 105 days after planting from uh, 2015 NYH2, and then uh, uh, so training it on that data and then testing it with images from 91 and 106 days after planting in 2017 NYH2. Uh, we see a, a R squared of 0.45. Um, and I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, there were many uh, plots where we couldn't get grain yield. Uh, so that's this blue, these blue values at the bottom where it, it was predicted, but we, we don't have true value. <coughs> and uh, moving uh, uh, in the future, I just want to say that the the, CNN isn't taking into account any genetic relationships, but there are ways that we can try incorporating like a genetic relationship into that. And I uh, want to thank, thank everyone, uh, especially uh, Nick San Antonio and Nick Casmore. Thank you. So the question was if I um, if I uh, used if I retrained the, the CNN um, or if I used pre-trained weights. Um, I just retrained the whole thing, uh, and I these were the the initial weights were random, so. Uh, Ed? Yeah, have you thought about maybe using an autoencoder to <coughs> essentially train against the two different gene types to train the architecture and then using that uh, autoencoder and the latent space speed types to predict yield? So the question is if I've used, uh, if I've thought about using an autoencoder to train the architecture. Um, and no, I have not. Um, <laughs> But um, I'd be interested to, to try that. You should probably read Joe's paper. OK. We can talk. OK. Because <laughs> uh, I mean, essentially, he did it from below. And I think from above, you know, the same approach were applied. I, I, actually, they even could put the two data sets could be put together. Okay. And I think it would be quite interesting. OK, thanks. Uh, Will? Well, it might be like the effect since you're only looking from above, just like 
of like variation between the unit types on these angles. So you're just getting lower value per plot just because of the sort of structure of the plan rather than something that's inherently more related to what you're interested in. Yeah, I, I, so the question is if, if, um, if the structure, more the spatial arrangement of the plot is, is really driving the correlation instead of the genotype or, and I think there's, especially for the CNN, there's, a, that's probably what's happening. Like, um, um, so we'll have to, have to be careful about that, but for like the NDVI or NDRE, um, that's probably not playing into it as much. Do you intend to build any more traditional linear models across longitudinal time points to try to predict your end of season phenotypes? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the question is if we're planning to use linear models to <coughs> model it longitudinally. Um, and yeah, def definitely. Um, Want to look at like random regressions and 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 the like, yeah. Um, but haven't yet. You showed that the image that you were analyzing was consisted of four quadrants with different uh, ratios or differences, right, between the different wavelengths. Why is that better than just having each wavelength in their in their own image? Well, I mean, doesn't. That, that, that process of subtraction is quite simple and could be done by the CNN itself, couldn't it? Yeah, um, good question. So the, um, it's why the input is a montage of, of the different spectra. Um, and um, so the, the reason I think is, um, um, well, I guess I should try it both ways, but um, uh, I've only tried it this way. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, I don't have a good answer, but um, <laughs> um, I think joining, having it so that you're not making multiple predictions on the same plot, I think maybe that's beneficial. Um, where the CNN is only learning, it's, that's its only source of information. Like, um, so yeah, but I, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> All right, let's thank uh, Nick one more time. Thank you this has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.